my ultimate goal in CZW when I came back, or before I left, I should say, was to do Tournament of Death against John Zandig. In the first round, I told whoever was booking at the time, I'm not going to take light tubes, I'm not going to take glass, but I could do barbed wire, I could do thumbtacks, have me and Zandig one-on-one. -on -one. Part of that was because I would hang out with Damien and Viking and Kenny the Bastard a lot. They were like my best buds at that time. And they were in love with Zandig. They just loved him. His, his weird spinning clotheslines and his crazy speeches and his giant gut. They just loved everything about him. And I wanted them to be like, oh my god, you're wrestling Zandig in Tournament of Death. That's insane. And I think it was going to happen at one point. I'd even kept the date open because I thought it was happening, but for some reason it didn't happen. And then what I was told is, okay, you're going to wrestle Zandig, but it's going to be later and it's going to be part of a cage match with like different teams and all this shit. It's going to be this big blow off to like the faction warfare thing. I was like, all right, whatever. And then came Trapped. And what happened is uh, a couple weeks before the show, Dragon Gate told me, hey, we want you to come here for two months. Because Chris Bosch went to Dragon Gate through PWG. Like, he sent a tape, and they booked him, and he went. And then I'm like, oh, shit, I want to go. So I sent uh, it's Dragon Gate a tape because Chris gave me the address. And they sent me an email, and they're like, hey, we want you to come for two months from, November, uh, from October 5th to November 27th. I'm like, oh, that means I'm going to miss uh, the two... Uh, three P the, the three CZW shows because I already had a three week tour of Europe booked for September. So in August, trapped happens. I get there and it's supposed to be me, Generico, and Frankie the Mobster representing Team Canada, the right. Canadians, Canadian. against Hate Club of Nick Gage, Nate Hatred, or no, Nick Gage, Justice Pain, and Zandig against Blackout, Ruckus, Sabian, and Eddie Kingston. And it's a three way. Nine-man cage match mm -hmm. with, I think it's elimination, but I'm not sure. Yeah, it was elimination. So I'm like, okay. So I get there, and I inform them that, hey, I have to drop the belt because I'm not going to be here in September, I'm not going to be here in October, and I'm not going to be here in November. I said, I could keep it if you want, but why would you want me to keep it? Just take it off me already. So they're like, well, who, you know, I'm like, can't we just put it on the line in the match and whoever pins me wins the belt, you know? He's like, and Zandy's like, fine. Generico's, Generico's winning the belt. I'm like, he's on my team. Right. He's like, I don't fucking care. And then Generico goes, oh, oh no, 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 no. I don't want that belt. He's like, I'm not going to be here either. Like, he was done too. Right. So, <laughs> Zandig's annoyed now. And we're trying to plan the match. And I, we're all sitting. And I always remember this. Bryce was with us too. Ryan, Bryce Rensberg. <laughs> and, uh. For some reason, Generico was smoking, and he never smoked. He would smoke once at a blue moon, and he's smoking a cigarette. And Zandig's trying to talk the match, but instead of talking about the match, he's talking about this angle that his son uh, was going to be in with DJ Hyde, where DJ was going to put him through a thing of barbed wire. Yeah. And Zandig goes, he's like, he's like, so DJ puts him through the barbed wire. And, and Generico goes, when in the match does this happen? Because he's trying to fuck with Zandig. Just to make other people laugh. And Zanning's like, it's not in the match. Fuck the match. And, but that's the whole reason why we're all gathered around is to talk about the match. And when he says, fuck the match, I'll always remember Janeko. Like, yeah, fuck the match, man. Who gives a shit about the match? And Zanning's like, so when my kid gets taken away, I'm going to go with him to the hospital. And we're like, oh. And then you're going to come back for the big save in the main event? He's like, no, I'm not in the fucking match. We're like, What? Like, what do you mean you're not in the match? He's like, I don't want to be in the fucking match. What's going to happen? I'm like, so who's going to be their partner? He's like, Eddie Kingston. Right. I'm like, what? He's in a, He's in Blackout. He's like, no. Because we're going to do an angle earlier on where Blackout kicks out Eddie Kingston. Robbie Marino takes Kingston's place in Blackout. And then Kingston's going to come out as Hate Club's third partner. And we're like, holy shit. And then I'm like, so who's going to beat me for the belt? And Zandig can't make a decision, so I'm like, I look, and I remember, I, Lufisto was with us. And she was starting to get over in CCW, and I see her, she's walking around, and she's a nice girl, and I know this meant a lot to her. And I was doing it because I like her. 
But I was also do, trying to do it... Like, I don't want her to feel bad. Like, I'm not trying to demean this moment for her because I knew it meant a lot. And I know that she really liked me for doing this. But I was really trying to see how crazy Zandig was willing to get. So I looked at her walk by and I said, Hey, John, I had an idea. He's like, what? I'm like, why don't we put Lufisto in the match? Have her pin me. And she becomes the Iron Man champion. A woman. And he looks at me and goes, I fucking love it. I was like, oh my god, that is fucking insane. He said, yes. So I went up to her. I'm like, hey, you're beating me for the Iron Man title tonight. She's like, what? I'm like, yeah. She's like, oh, wow, thanks. I'm like, yeah, no problem. So we implemented this little story in the match where I, somehow she ended up being put in our match. So there was four of us. For no reason there was four Canadians when there was three hate club. And th anyway, and somehow, some way, the tip was made that if I get pinned, whoever pins me wins the belt. And we had done an angle during the show where I didn't want her to be on our team, and she's just a woman, and I don't give a shit about her, and I don't, I don't want her on the team. But she's like, no, I can help you guys. I'll be on the team. And then at one point during the match, just fuck it. The first three minutes of that match, by the way, if you watch, I do nothing. Everybody starts fighting, and there was a big jug of water for some reason ringside. It wasn't mine. And I don't want to be a part of it because it's just too ridiculous. I took the jug of water and drank it and just walked around ringside until Eddie Kingston ruined it and came at me. And then I remember he hit me and I swung to hit him and I hit my funny bone on the apron. Anyway, that's my memories from that match up until the point where fucking... Uh, um, oh, at one point we brawled outside of the cage. Somehow we managed to get outside of the cage. And Justice Payne was throwing chairs at Generico like a maniac. Mm -hmm. And Frankie got mad. And Frankie turned him around. And as soon as he saw Frankie, he, like, he turned around and left. He was like, fuck this. I don't want Frankie. Like, he was fine throwing chairs at Generico. But when Frankie came at him, he just hightailed it. Uh, anyway, till eventually, it's me and Lufisto in the middle of the ring. I pie-faced her. She kicked me in the nuts. Rolled me up. One, two, three. Beat her own partner. Took me out of the match and won the Iron Man champion in one full swing. And that was it for me in CZW until I returned a couple years later as a surprise opponent for one Vordell Walker. Really weird. So weird.